sound. Learning about types of sound. How do we hear it? We hear sound through our ears. The shape of the outer part of the ear is like funnel. When sound enters in it, it travels down a canal at the end of which a thin membrane is stretched tightly. It is called the eardrum. It performs an important function. Sound vibrations make the eardrum vibrate. The eardrum sends vibrations to the inner ear. From there, the signal goes to the brain. That is how we hear. Amplitude, time period and frequency of a vibration. We have learned that the to and fro movement of an object is called as vibration. This motion is also called oscillatory motion. The number of oscillation per second is called the frequency of oscillation. Frequency is expressed in hertz. Its symbol is HZ. A frequency of 1 hertz is 1 oscillation per second. Amplitude and frequency are two important properties of any sound. Can we differentiate sounds on the basis of their amplitudes and frequencies? The loudness is expressed in a unit called decibel, dB. The following table gives some idea of the loudness of sound coming from various sources. The frequency determines the shrillness or pitch of a sound. If the frequency of vibration is higher, we say that the sound is shrill and has a higher pitch. If the frequency of vibration is lower, we say that the sound has a lower pitch. For example, a drum vibrates with a low frequency. Therefore, it produces a low-pitched sound. A whistle has a high frequency and therefore produces a sound of higher pitch. A bird makes a high-pitched sound whereas a lion makes a low-pitched sound. However, the roar of a lion is very loud. While the sound of the bird is quite feeble. Every day, we hear the voices of children and adults. By hearing, we can make out the difference in their sound. We can say that the frequency of the voice of a child is higher than that of an adult. Usually, the voice of a woman has a higher frequency and is shriller than that of a man. Audible and inaudible sounds. We know that we need a vibrating body for the production of sound. The fact is that sounds of frequencies less than about 20 vibrations per second, that is 20 hertz, cannot be detected by the human ear. Such sounds are called inaudible. On the higher side, sounds of frequencies higher than about 20,000 vibrations per second. 20 kilohertz are also not audible to the human ear. Thus, for human ear, the range of audible frequencies is roughly from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Some animals can hear sounds of frequencies Higher than 20,000 hertz, dogs have this ability. The police use high frequency whistles which dogs can hear but humans cannot. The ultrasound equipment familiar to us for investigating and tracking many medical problems works at frequencies higher than 20,000 hertz. Noise and music. We hear different types of sounds around us. All sounds are always not pleasing. Sounds sometimes cause discomfort to us. Some sounds are pleasant to the ear, whereas some are not. 
Suppose construction work is going on in our neighborhood. The sounds coming from the construction site is not at all pleasing. We never enjoy the sounds produced by horns of car and trucks. Such unpleasant sounds are called as noise. We enjoy sound from the musical instruments. Musical sound is one which is pleasing to the ear. Sound produced by a violin is musical sound. The string of a ektara also gives out a musical sound. But if a musical sound becomes too loud, it would never remain melodious. Noise pollution. Presence of excessive or unwanted sounds in the environment is called noise pollution. Major causes of noise pollution are sounds of vehicles, explosions, machines, loudspeakers, etc. Television and transistor, radio at high volume, some kitchen appliances, desert coolers, all continue noise pollution at home. Presence of excessive noise in the surroundings may cause many health related problems such as Lack of sleep, hypertension, high blood pressure, anxiety and many more health disorders, a person who is exposed to a loud sound continuously may get temporary or even permanent impairment of hearing. Measures to limit noise pollution To control noise, we must control the sources of noise. For this, silencing devices must be installed in aircraft engines, transport vehicles, industrial machines and home appliances. Use of automobile horns should be minimized. Television and music systems should be run at low volumes. Trees must be planted along the roads and around the buildings to cut down the sounds reaching the residents, thus reducing the harmful effects of the noise pollution. Hearing impairment the total hearing impairment, which is rare, is usually from birth itself. Partial disability is generally the result of a disease, injury or age. A child with impaired hearing needs to take special care. By learning sign languages, such children can communicate effectively. Because speech develops as the direct result of hearing, a child with a hearing loss may have defective speech as well. Technological devices for the hearing impaired have made it possible for such persons to improve their quality of life. Summary The eardrum senses the vibration of sounds. It sends the signals to the brain. This process is called hearing. The number of oscillations or vibrations per second is called the frequency of oscillation. The frequency is expressed in Hertz, Hz. Larger the amplitude of vibration, the louder is the sound. Higher the frequency of vibration, the higher is the pitch and shriller is the sound. Unpleasant sounds are called noise. Excessive or unwanted sounds lead to the noise pollution. Noise pollution may pose health problems for human beings. Plantation on the roadside and elsewhere can reduce the noise pollution. That's all in this lesson, students. Live a melodious musical life. Take care.